welcome to episode 46 of the Comic Boot. I'm Kalen. Uh, I'm Cody. Who just burped. Yep. Right as I was like, in. quiet! <laughs> <laughs> I tried to hold it in, don't be rude. <laughs> Belch. And I am... Senior Yamez. Otherwise known as James. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Oof. So today, like we talked, like we mentioned on Tuesday, we're going to be discussing the documentary Batman and Bill. Which is available on Hulu. Yes, you can watch it, it for free. A, well, semi-free, so I have to pay for the Hulu subscription. Or if you know somebody with a Hulu subscription, beg them to let you borrow it long enough to watch this documentary. Yeah, because this is it's something the, that... If you're if, a Batman fan... If you you're here to listen to this podcast, this is going to be something that you are going to want, going to, want to watch. That being said, if you don't want us to, like... Spo- I don't know how you spoil a documentary. It's so stupid. But if you don't want us to spoil a documentary for you, then I would recommend that you uh, turn away... Or listen to us and then go watch it because I've watched it twice now and it it just got quicker the second time, but it's still as powerful and as effective the second time. And it's, it's relatively short for a documentary. It's hour like eighty and minutes, hour yeah. and a half basically, yeah. which is great. It's I mean, if you can devote eighty minutes of your life to to learning this, it's worth it. Yes. It'll change how you view a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's true, well, especially Bob Kane. Um, so this is, this documentary it follows an author who, uh, his name is Mark Tyler Nobleman, and it follows his investigative process to find out just exactly who Bill Finger was and what role he played in the creation and execution of Batman as we know it. And if you don't know who Batman is, why are you listening? That's but welcome, <laughs> welcome, and we will be more than happy to do a history of Batman. Um, <laughs> right, oh, all God. 75 years. If, if you're here, then then welcome, now. you are lucky number 13 on our listeners. <laughs> you keep doing that, like why? Be it's grateful. a running joke, shut be up. Be grateful that we have the 12 amazing people who stick around week after week listening to your dumbass. Then you should tell your friends to make it 13. But you're both here. <laughs> oh, that's true. You'd have to make Julian listen to it. Make Julian listen to it. <laughs> he Julian actually, he me. actually does. I actually, when we first started talking, I said you, I do so, a podcast. Okay, you might want to check it out. But uh, anyways, so like James said, this is this documentary explores Nobleman's efforts, his investigative process into figuring out of why. not only who Bill Finger was. I mean, also what he played in the role in cre- of creation of Batman, but then also. Why nobody really knows, knows who, who he is. is. Well, they did. The thing is, is that what I get from this is that he's not the first one to to not, open up this this box that Pandora has closed. Everybody's known who Bill Finger is in the comic industry. Everybody knows Bill Finger. He created Green Lantern. You know, he wrote uh, one detective comic. Alan, Alan Scott. Oh, Alan Scott. Okay. Um, like I, the original, he wrote a lot, most of the original storylines with Green Lantern and stuff like that. But... This, uh, Bill Finger was, uh, for all intents and purposes, he was a writer. He was a comic writer. Um, and this investigation by by Mark Tyler Nobleman, we'll call him Mark or Nobleman or whatever you want to call him, but um, stemmed from an interview that Bill Finger did in 1965 in New York City at the first official Comic-Con, the first Comic-Con where they actually had creators show up and do panels and things Instead like that. Instead of just sweating It was at a rundown, shabby hotel yes. in New York City. And the beautiful thing about this documentary is that they animate it like all the way through, kind of like, and a, like a, a comic, comic book. book. Like yeah. a motion comic. It's like a stop motion, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, Bill Finger gave a, a panel interview discussing um, the way that direction and the writing process happens on comics. And... Um, It was widely known at that point in time, there was a guy that was given the interview that that kind of set this up, that knew that there's no way that in hell that this can be, that Bob Kane can be executing the writing, the art, and everything else with Batman as a series was in 64. All by himself. All by himself. And so he started writing letters to DC Comics. Mm -hmm. And he was writing letters to DC Comics, and and he was like, who else is helping Bob Kane with this? And the resounding answer that he kept on getting back was Bill Finger. And so that prompted a further investigation by this gentleman, and he comes to find out that there's a common story, now a common story, that we know, that we will share with you on how Batman was originally conceived. conceived. And that is Bob Kane 
was not 14 years old and did not come up with a brand Yeah, no, that's complete and utter so, horse um, he, We'll talk about that in a little bit. But Bob Kane saw the uh, amount of money that Siegel and Schuster were making for um, doing Superman, for drawing and writing Superman. And Bob Kane was motivated by money. He wanted to make money. And out of his own words, he was approached by some people at... Um, National Periodicals. National Periodicals. Sorry, I was looking for it. Um, National Periodicals, which eventually becomes DC Comics. Um, and they said, can you come up with another... Give, us a, give us a Superman, basically. Yeah, and said. so he sat down and created a... What do they call it? Tuxedo-masked guy in a Domino. red... Domino-masked guy in, in a, a red, red unitard. Red yeah, unitard with and, stiff bat wings attached. And That he, was his Batman. And he knew it wouldn't work. Yeah. And he knew who Bill Finger was. And he asked Bill to come in and look at this. And Bill Finger came in and kind of came up with the idea of what Batman is as we know it today. You know, he said, instead of a rigid cape, instead of rigid wings, let's make it a, uh, like a scalloped cape. scalloped cape. You know, let's make him the color of night. Let's make him gray and black yeah, and gonna put be a bat thing on his chest. Yeah. And let's give him a cowl, cowl with two pointed ears so that he like even looks bat. like a cow. <clears throat> so he actually looks like his namesake. Yeah. And Bob Kane drew it up, knew he had a winner. The very next Monday, he went into the offices at DC Comics and sold it as a comic book to DC with him being the sole creator. So basically he stole this idea out from under Bill Finger. Hold up. Because he did talk to Bill, and he said, "I will." After. Cut. Afterwards, he said, "I will cut you a profit." Right, a handshake agreement. A handshake, a gentleman's but agreement. That... He was he claimed sole creatorship. Yes. Of this character, and when that, that was in it the was contract. was not the fact, and that's how eventually, flash forwarding to 2012, 2013, 2014, they are able to with Bill Finger's granddaughter you know, proceed into, you know, the legal negotiations and stuff like that that she has in order to get Bill Finger a byline. Because it, what was it? It was the law <coughs> that uh, copyright copyright law has to be through an heir of right. Bill Finger. And that's what, that's what like, the second that's half... Whole, the, yeah. Like, the, the second half of the documentary is him trying to tr- track down... It's not down copyright Peter. law. It's, wasn't it copyright? No, it's or something it was, to rights, though. It's not copyright. Some kind it's of some... Yeah. I, I thought it was copyright, but I guess not. But this this narrative that Bob Kane had about him being the sole creator of this is something that he lived with from um, thirty nine thirty nine until his death. I mean, well, until well until his biography came out, his autobiography. I use air quotes on autobiography. Yeah, because he had someone he, helping him write. Came out. He had a co-writer. And, yeah, came out and he gave an interview at that point in time that said. You know, I would love it, going back and thinking about it. I would give Bill Finger credit where credit was was due and give him a byline. But unfortunately for Bill Finger, that he's was dead. you know 15 years after he was that long was 16, gone. But yeah, 15 or 16. Yeah. Yeah. He died in 74, and that was in 89 or 90. So it was like 15 or 16 years. Yeah. But um, so this is a, a lie that Bob Kane lived with and proceeded to you know, push out there as fact for his entire life. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's just dumbfounding that, that this is, this is happens and it, we watched this documentary and, and I know for me, Batman is, I was 12 years old when 89 Batman came out and to know, watch this documentary and know that this fight's been going on since before then. And that was like, Bill Finger's second wife was, you know, at the at the forefront of trying to get his name attached to that film itself, and there was actually news articles and news reports and stuff like that yeah. coming out that there were, you know, this this controversy that there was another person behind Batman, right? And Warner Brothers and, and DC Studios they never denied that. It was just more of a headache for them to accept it or to even. You know, say, well, hey, you know, sorry. Because for the past, what, 40-something years, they've been saying Batman's created by Bob Kane. Right, it's easier to just continue with the lie. Right, they'll be undoing their history. Right. And so me being 12 years old and going to see, and this is when my Batman mania started, and this is... Well, that's when Batmania started as a whole. Well, uh, uh, 
it got rekindled at that point in time. Yeah, in the, you know, 65, 66. Yeah, with the 60s stuff, with Adam West and, and all that stuff, it was huge. Well, that's when Bob Kane realized just how big of an icon Batman had become. And that was the, the yeah. interview with Stan Lee. and He's like, yeah, I did it all myself. You know, so even in 65, you know, he's yeah. still trying to... Well, why would he give credit then? Because that he was raking in the dough even more so then. Right. And it's one of those things that's just like, you know, Bob Kane is painted very, in a very ugly light where this whole documentary is concerned. And one of the things that Nobleman's very, very keen on saying is that I didn't know him as a person. I didn't know Bob Kane as a person. I, he could have been a great, you know, father, husband, whatever. Yeah. But as a creator, he is a dick. And yeah. there's no other better way to say that, but... He's just a thieving dick, you know, and then you come to find out that, you know, he sells paintings as his own whenever it's, he's not even painting the stuff, you know, so he's, he likes to have work created for him Hmm. and then him take all the credit for it. Did you ever see the film Big Eyes? Yeah. No. Yeah, about, uh, she, or she paints these pictures of children with very large eyes and it, uh, gets into popularity in the 60s I, as well, I believe. But her then husband was like, just say, he's like, your name is Keen, my name is Keen. So, you know, it's so he started taking credit for it. It's and then Barbara Keen. Barbara Keen. And he started taking credit for it. And then finally, or she, he started like getting abusive. And then so she took her daughter and left him and went to Hawaii. He found her or something. I know that the final court took place in Hawaii where basically the judge is like, okay paint me this. He couldn't do it. She did. He's like, I'm siding with you because you can actually do it in front of me. But it's the same idea. Like that's yeah. a very Bob Kane S thing. Of yeah, it's... absolutely. And <clears throat> to, to kind of rip on first thing. Oh, uh, oh on the, the bit on the yeah. movie. Yeah. I have no idea. I've never seen it. But anyways, it's the same idea. There is why would, you know, I can pass this off as my own, and I don't have to do any of the work, but I can take all the credit. And he and just wanted money. To, Bob Kane just wanted to be famous, man. You know, it came down to it. People who knew Bob Kane knew Bob Kane just wanted to be famous. Yeah. You know, he just wanted to be known as the sole creator of Batman. And he played that up so much to almost a creepy level. He almost made himself a, a myth. Or, well, not necessarily a myth, but almost a god in a way. like In his own mind. Either. In his own mind. He was... See, Howard Hughes the fuck out of himself is what he did. Except with the exception of locking himself in. So, is it possible to think theater. that Maxi Zeus is supposed to be a caricature of Bob Kane? the fuck is Maxi Zeus? He's, He's one a, of Batman's, Batman's villains. villains. He's like one of the sea raid villains. He thinks that, that he is about. a Greek god. Oh, no, I doubt it. And it's, it's hilarious to me, though. But it's the idea there, though, that just... Yeah, some kind of crazy rich guy thinks he's uh, meant to rule as a god. Yeah, but so in this in this documentary, um, we see a lot of famous comic book people, and one of the uh, Kevin Smith is in it because Kevin Smith actually <coughs> did uh, interview Nobleman on his podcast. On his podcast, yeah, Fat yep, Man Batman, for Batman, Batman on Batman, and um, one of the things to kind of rip off of what Kevin Smith says, so I can't take credit for a lot of this, but Batman is a character we all grew up with. And uh, he is a moral compass for many of us to do the right thing, to take care of those in need. For many, he could be considered almost a Christ-like character. You know, it's the first icon that we recognize as being larger than life. And I know for me, it, when I was growing up, I had Superman mugs, and I grew up with Christopher Reeve's Superman and stuff like that. But it wasn't until Michael Keaton's Batman where I really kind of fell in love with the idea of the superhero even though it was just a normal man, mm-hmm. you know. And to know that his legacy is has been stolen, the legacy of Batman has been stolen from one of its creators is heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking, especially when you find out that Bill Finger died alone at a young age and probably suffering from a crazy level of depression. Yeah. In a little shitty apartment, you know. Died by.